Have you ever heard the expression, the customer is always right? Sometimes you gotta go above the law to get justice. Tao and Sue are never gonna find peace in this world. As long as that gang's around. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 vigilante justice movies. Do you remember this? For this list, we'll be taking a look at films featuring protagonists that are not members of law enforcement, who take things into their own hands to make sure justice is served. People should not be afraid of their governments. Governments should be afraid of their people. That means we'll be focusing on vigilantes who are normal people, so we'll be excluding superheroes and other costumed crime fighters. Sometimes, truth isn't good enough. Sometimes people deserve more. Sometimes people deserve to have their faith rewarded. Number 10, Prisoners. Pray for the best, prepare for the worst. Containing powerful performances from Hugh Jackman and Jake Gyllenhaal, this film highlights the lengths to which parents will go in order to save the lives of their children. He's not a person anymore. No, he stopped being a person when he took our daughters. When a pair of young girls goes missing during Thanksgiving and the only suspect is released, one of the fathers decides to take matters into his own hands by kidnapping said suspect and performing his own investigation. Alex, Alex, listen. I'm going to get you out of here, okay? Just tell me where the maze is. As the detective assigned to the case struggles to come up with useful leads, the ethical dilemmas of vigilantism and the urgent desire to find their children lead the parents down an increasingly dark path to the truth. Someone has to make him talk. Someone. Number nine, falling down. I'm the bad guy? Yeah. How'd that happen? In this Joel Schumacher directed tale of a man who reaches his breaking point, Michael Douglas portrayed a laid off defense engineer who snaps one morning while stuck in LA traffic. Hey! Where do you think you're going? Going home. A profound social commentary about the erosion of the American dream, this film follows William D. Fenn's Foster as he rampages through Los Angeles in an attempt to attend his daughter's birthday party. It's Adele's birthday. Yes, I know it's her birthday. What do you want? I'm coming home. Unleashing his pent-up frustration on convenience store clerks, gang members, fast food workers, and golfers, Douglas' character lashes out at the injustice that surrounds him in a convincing portrayal of an everyman who simply can't take it anymore. And now you're gonna die wearing that stupid little hat. How does it feel? Number eight, The Equalizer. When you pray for rain, you gotta deal with the mud too. Based on the 1980s TV series of the same name, this action-packed big-screen adaptation stars Denzel Washington as Robert McCall, a former CIA operative who now works at a hardware store. Gotta be who you are in this world, right? No matter what. When he befriends a young prostitute that becomes the victim of the Russian mob, Robert decides to come out of retirement to unleash his own brand of justice on the gangsters. Ah! Using guns, his bare hands, and plenty of borrowed tools from his day job, Washington's protagonist is as charming as he is deadly as he sets out to dismantle the Russian mafia and their criminal enterprises. 28 minus 9, 19. Number seven, drive. I don't sit in while you're running it down. I don't carry a gun. I drive. Described by director Nicholas Binding Refn as his attempt to create a fairy tale set in Los Angeles, this neo-noir crime film brings together Ryan Gosling, Brian Cranston, and Ron Perlman for a stunning entry into the vigilante genre. Anything happens in that five minutes and I'm yours, no matter what. Anything a minute either side of that and you're on your own. When a part-time getaway driver befriends his new neighbor and her young son, he gets involved in her husband's debt to some gangsters. This opens up a Pandora's box of danger for him and those he cares about. Combining art house visuals with gruesome violence, Drive showcases how far one man will go to protect the people closest to him and the price he must pay to help them survive unscathed. Shut your mouth, or I'll kick your teeth down your throat and I'll shut it for you. Number six, Gran Torino. I blow a hole in your face and then I go in the house and I sleep like a baby. You can count on that. A thought-provoking story about overcoming prejudice, this Clint Eastwood-directed drama follows the director as he takes on the role of Walt Kowalski, a widowed Korean War veteran who is not thrilled about his new Hmong neighbors moving in next door. Who are you? Hi. What do you want? I live next door. Come on, get the shit out of your mouth. Tell I, me what um... you want. After protecting one of them from a local gang's harassment, Walt begins to reconsider his views and comes to accept and protect them, even becoming a father figure to his prized 1972 Gran Torino's would-be thief. 
I'm proud to say that you're my friend, but you've got your whole life ahead of you. But me, I finish things. Despite being 78 years old at the time, Clint Eastwood still delivers an intimidating performance as the ill-tempered Walt, using his trusty M1 Garand rifle to defend his community from the criminals who terrorize it. Thank you. Get off my lawn. Number five, the Boondock Saints. Liberate. In. Mixing organized crime elements with a Catholic commitment to fighting evil, this action-packed crime flick starring Norman Reedus, Sean Patrick Flannery, and Willem Dafoe brings the vigilante justice in spades. Each day, we will spill their blood till it rains down from the sky! Inspired by director Troy Duffy's personal experience of seeing a drug dealer rob a deceased neighbor, this film wrestles with the dual nature of justice and vengeance. Uh, there was a firefight! After killing Russian mobsters in self-defense, the brothers McManus experience an epiphany and agree to become vigilantes in the service of God. Taking the fight directly to the criminal underworld in their hometown of Boston, the fraternal twins set out on a mission to dish out some divine retribution to the Russian mob. Sort of like 7-Eleven. We're not always doing business, but we're always open. Mm. That was nicely put. Number four, Taken. I don't know who you are. I don't know what you want. If you are looking for ransom, I can tell you I don't have money. But what I do have are a very particular set of skills. When the daughter of former CIA agent Brian Mills is kidnapped while traveling through Europe, her sex trafficking captors soon realize who they are dealing with. A veritable nightmare. You either give me what I need or this switch will stay on until they turn the power off for lack of payment on the bill. Directed by Pierre Morel and starring Liam Neeson, this action thriller and first entry in the Taken trilogy delves into the classic story of a parent going to extreme lengths to protect his or her child. You sold my daughter. You sold her. Huh? To who? With only 96 hours to rescue his daughter, Brian Mills opts to take matters into his own hands and both find her and the people who took her himself. And it is the latter who end up on the receiving end of his paternal thirst for vengeance. I will look for you. I will find you. And I will kill you. Number three, Death Wish. Nothing to do but cut and run, huh? Arguably the career highlight of Charles Bronson, this 1974 film about an architect turned vigilante in many ways laid the foundation for the modern vigilante flick. Last night there was another double killing, which appears to be the work of the person New York news media have dubbed the vigilante. After his wife and daughter are brutally attacked by street thugs, Paul Kersey takes a cue from the Old West and decides to release his rage by killing muggers at night on the streets of New York. <laughs> Using himself as bait, Paul earns the nickname The Vigilante and sparks social and political tension through his lethal methods of crime fighting. This is your gun, Mr. Kersey. If we try to give you a chance to get rid of it, you wouldn't take it. A dark character study about a former conscientious objector who is consumed by a desire for justice, Death Wish illustrates the devastating effects of losing a loved one and the imperfections of the justice system. Any chance of catching these men? There's a chance, sure. Just a chance. Number two, Dirty Harry. You've got to ask yourself one question. Do I feel lucky? Well, do you, punk? Although Harry Callahan is a cop by trade, what makes him one of the most memorable on-screen vigilantes is his willingness to go above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to dealing with the bad guys. Now you know why they call me Dirty Harry. Every dirty job that comes along. In this 1971 classic that spawned the Dirty Harry franchise, the tough-as-nails San Francisco homicide inspector goes up against a psychotic serial killer known simply as Scorpio. I'm going to let her die. I just wanted you to know that. A film that investigates the balancing act between the rights of victims and perpetrators. Dirty Harry set the standard for the rogue cop films that would follow and introduced the 44 Magnum brand of justice to moviegoers. Last minute, you always want to grab onto somebody, take somebody with you. Just down you go. Before we unveil our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. You see, I know what it feels like to be helpless. Just like when I watched you slaughter my whole family. You and me are going on a car ride to hell. You're gonna miss me. You're riding shotgun. The Iglesia dice que hay que perdonar. Forgiveness is between them and God. My job to arrange the meeting. Who the hell are you? 
I'm every little girl you ever watched, touched, hurt, screwed, killed. I should have walked out of that train. I could have just shown them the gun. They wouldn't have hurt me. Why don't my hands shake? Why doesn't somebody stop me? Number one, Taxi Driver. You talking to me? Directed by Martin Scorsese, this gritty psychological thriller follows Travis Bickle, an insomniac Vietnam War veteran who spends his nights driving a taxi and musing about the moral decay of the Big Apple. Loneliness has followed me my whole life, everywhere. Bars and cars, sidewalks, stores, everywhere. There's no escape. I'm God's only man. Played to perfection by Robert De Niro in one of his most iconic roles, Travis's desire to clear up New York of its vices leads him to meet Iris, an underage prostitute whom he decides to rescue from life on the street. Can I see you again? <laughs> That's not hard to do. Assembling a small arsenal and assuming a militaristic persona, Travis wages a one-man crusade against Iris's pimp and anyone else who stands in his way. What'd you say? I'll see you later, Kappa. I'm no cop, man. Unnerving and grim in its tone, Taxi Driver offers a glimpse at the mindset of one of cinema's most unhinged vigilantes. I got some bad ideas in my head, I just can't. Do you agree with our list? What's your favorite vigilante justice movie? For more entertaining top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Give me the rest of the bread. Hey.